In the video that I made not long ago, we talked about what aging does to our muscles. These changes start even as young as 30 years old, and 30 years old is still young, at least for me. <laughs> Well, those changes don't always look good, but we also saw that running performance does not necessarily decrease with age. Not at all. Depending on how experienced you are, how you eat, how you train, and how much you run. Because there is a point of diminishing returns when you run so much that you actually start losing muscles because you're running. Now, some runners not only run lightning fast, but more importantly, they increase their racing speed as they get into older ages. I mean, we're talking about two hours something marathons and runners that are way above 40, if I remember well. Don't quote me on that. So what do those faster, older runners know that we don't? Let's talk about this. Salut, c'est Stéphane from Safe Motions. Now, before we talk about the two things that I think you can change in your training plan so that you can keep on improving and running faster way beyond your 40s, I'll give you a quick summary of what I said happens to the bodies of aging runners. You thought I was gonna ask you to like and subscribe, right? Not yet. I mean, you can. As humans, we lose up to 5% of our muscle mass per decade but there's a really obvious counter to that, which is strength and resistance training. Now, I hear you asking already, does running count as resistance training? Well, absolutely, if your training program is well-designed. For example, hill trainings will challenge your body in different ways than road running does. It definitely pushes the leg muscles a little harder. So hills training is a perfectly valid workout to add to your overall muscle development program. But at least for me, I found that weight training, squats and lunges are a much more effective way to control how much resistance I put on my muscles. And so it's easier to create a progressive loading program specifically for muscle development because the body is really good at adapting to the challenges that we give to them. So we constantly need to challenge the muscles for them to constantly grow. If we're just running the same hills all the time, then once our body is used to it, the muscle growth stops. In order to continue into the momentum of muscle growth, then we need to perhaps add a backpack on our shoulders to make ourselves heavier or put more weights on your squats and lunges. However, again, if you just do running or hill repeats, you're only going to ever develop the running muscles. They might keep on becoming strong if your training program is good, but then relatively speaking, the other muscles that we need for living will start to get weaker. And yes, I am talking about your core, for example. I've talked about the most important muscles to develop for running in another video somewhere up there. But in essence, you want to develop from the bottom to the top, the foot core, the calves, the glutes, the hip flexors, and the core. Lots of different examples of exercises in this channel, so feel free to browse around. As promised, the two things that you can do immediately in your training program to make sure you keep on improving your running as you get into older ages. You know you're getting older when your beard starts to go gray like this. This wasn't there at the beginning of my YouTube journey, by the way. That's what YouTube did to me. So the first one is a little obvious. If you're running three times a week or four times a week, just remove one day and use that spare day to do some strength training. Now I hear you, you hate resistance training and stretches, but you could make it fun. You could do some drills, you can work on your asymmetries, you can fix your weaknesses. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Do some good to your body. It feels good, try, and it will reflect on your performance. You can also use this opportunity to work on your form. The second thing you can do is create a training program where the base unit is two weeks instead of one week of training. So you can do your speed training at the beginning of the two weeks, followed by plenty of recovery time. You can do some strength training right after. You can have your easy runs and your long runs towards the end of the two weeks period. I mean, if that's too long for you, you could also do a 10 days week if it fits into the logistics of your life. Here's a little bonus. Third thing you can do, if ever you're feeling a little bit of pain in areas that are unusual for you, then in order to maintain your cardio fitness, just consider doing things like cycling, swimming, elliptical training, rowing. All of these do help anyway for your general fitness. Because as I always say, running for me is all about longevity. You want to be able to run till the end. So take care of your body and your performance will follow. Of course, that's not the whole picture. And for me as a therapist, the most common weakness that I find in runners, elite or amateurs, young or old, is always the deep core stabilizers. You can't really run at your strongest if your pelvis is wobbly. Maybe you're already a super fast runner, but imagine if you had that strength in the pelvis, how much faster you would run. So follow the link, or there, to fix those deep core stabilizers. And if maybe you've learned something today, or you enjoy that content, please feel free to like and subscribe Now's the moment. A bientôt.